Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to share a very fun but challenging example on the binomial theorem. And in case you forgot the binomial theorem or the binomial expansion formula, here it is at the top right. Now, our really fun, cool question is this, which is find the coefficient of the x to the ninth term in the expansion of this here. But wait, this here is a trinomial raised to the 12th power in particular. It's a quadratic with all three terms showing raised to the 12th power. So how do we use the binomial expansion formula on a trinomial? Well, in case you're doing this as a contest math problem or something similar to this, then because they like being tricky uh, contest math folks, you should try and see if the given trinomial or whatever you're given can be written as a binomial. That is, in this particular case, we have to see if this quadratic is a perfect square because if it were a perfect square, then we could write it as a binomial to a power, uh, in particular a binomial to the second power, and raising that uh, in turn to the twelfth doesn't change the fact that it'd be a binomial. So we could just apply the binomial expansion formula directly once we get there. But this quadratic is not even factorable, let alone uh, a perfect square. And so we don't have that choice. But what we can do is we can try and force it be a binomial by grouping the first two terms together or grouping the last two terms together. And so I'm saying we could do this. And I'm going to prefer the latter of the two for no particular reason. Um, you could go with the former if you want. Um, anyway, um, I'm saying we could uh, view this guy here as being the form a plus b to o to the 12th power, where clearly a would have to be x squared and b would have to be 3x minus 2. So let's look at it like this and get a feel for a plus b o to the 12th power. Um, so if we look at the first few terms, um, we know that we have to start with 12 to 0, a to the 12th, and b to the 0th. So that's this here. And then 12 choose 1, and you get it, a to the 11th, b to the 1st, and 12 choose 2, and blah, blah, blah. And um, I skip uh, a few terms in, in here and um, decide to stop here for now. And in a second, we'll figure out why I chose to stop here uh, for now. All right, uh, but let's have a closer look uh, starting back at the first term um, of this guy, right? Okay, or again, a and b are these guys. Okay, now here we see that... Uh, a to the 12th is going to have us um, write x to the uh, 24th once we simplify. But that's too much, right? We're looking for coefficients of x to the 9th. Um, and so we look at this next guy. And this next guy um, will have x to the 22nd multiplying 3x minus 2. Um, and um, so if we look, uh, if we think about it a, a bit more, we see that the smallest power of x that we'll get in this guy is x to the 22nd multiplying a negative 2 here and a 12 choose 1, right? And so that's no good. x to the 22nd is too much. And in here, the smallest power of x that we'll get is x to the 20th because this binomial here, once we raise it to the second power, will have three terms and when simplified. And the very last term will be like 4, right? And but uh, that will be 4x to the 0, but we still have to multiply by this x to the 20th. So the smallest power of x that we could get uh, with this uh, here is x to the 20th. And so you see that like it's hopeless to look at the first uh, few terms, and that's why I skipped on down to this guy. Right now, if you think a little bit, you see that uh, this 3x minus 2 to uh, the powers that we raise it will always have um, uh, x powers ranging from x to this power here. So in this part, x to the second, in this part, x to the seventh. It will start there, but it will go all the way down to x to the zeroth. What I'm saying is this guy here will contain a constant always. So really what we have to do is concentrate on this a to the uh, whatever power, right? Like where a is x squared. So in this part, we just focus on x to the 20th. So here it's clear that since we'll be able to make a constant in this part with the very last term in the expansion of 3x minus 2 to the 7th, uh, what we have to worry about is what power is this going to be? Well, this is x to the 10th. So we see that altogether uh, with uh, all of the things that we can make in this part, the smallest power of x we can make is x to the 10th. That's still too much. 
but the next guy will do the trick. And if you think about it, all the terms uh, uh, that follow uh, this term will be uh, will allow us to make x to the ninth. So let's start looking at those terms. And um, yeah, to do that, we need space. So again, we're going to start with 12 choose 8 term, right? So that's going to have us write 12 choose 8 and then a to the 4th which is a to the 12 minus 8, right? And then b to the 8th, right? Okay, cool. As I said, this guy will allow us to make an x to the 9th term. But so will this guy and everyone that follows all the way to the end. Um, all right, so uh, let's start with this guy. Well, this guy uh, is going to uh, make us an x to the 9th and this part. Well, this we can't do anything about. This is 12 choose 8, 12 choose 8 and then x to the 8th. This is kind of fixed, but this guy is what we're going to expand and then um, pair like the expansion of this and the distribution of this to make our x to the ninth. So in the expansion of this, we need the term that has just x to the first power, right? And that term is going to come from 8 choose 7 and then times 3x to the power 8 minus 7, which is 3x to the power one and therefore we'll have x to the first and then of course we have to multiply that by negative two to the seventh power so that's how we make the x to the ninth guy and this part but in total because there are nine terms in the expansion of three x minus two to the eighth power um, this here once it's all expanded we'll have a total of nine terms because this guy here is going to multiply every one of the nine terms um, that this guy is going to um, make once we expand this guy, right? Okay, okay, okay. You get it, you get it. And in this part, in this part, we'll get x to the sixth, right? And then, therefore, we need to uh, pick the x to the third term from this part. And uh, from this part, then, that'll mean we have to choose uh, nine, cho no pun intended, nine, choose six, and then three x to the power three, and then negative 2 to the power of 6, right? You get it, you get it. And then, and this very last guy, though, um, since we'll have um, this being x to the 0th power, we just have to pick out, well, other than the 12 choose 12, which is 1. Uh, other than that, like, uh, we just have to worry about what the x to the ninth term will be and this part. And that's going to come from, what, uh, 12 choose 3, um, and then uh, 3x to the ninth and negative 2 to the third, right? Okay, 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 cool. So everything I just like talked you through uh, could be um, a bit easier seen after we first simplify here. Like, and, and all I did in this next step is like uh, take care of the back to back powers on x. And that's all. So um, not much to talk about here. But yeah, everything else I said should have you caught up at this point like this is everything I said right okay cool uh, a little bit ago all right so then you know like we have like some combining to do here like x to the eighth here and uh, 3x here well we could just bring the axis together and write x to the ninth and we write variables after coefficients so uh, we could write 12 choose 8 and then 8 choose 7 and maybe in front of them a negative 2 to the seventh and then uh, a 3 to the first, right? Okay, cool. And if we do that uh, and then do similar in all the other parts, then uh, in our next slide, well, we need space first, but uh, once we make space in our next slide, given what I just told you, we could write this, right? Basically lead with the powers of 2 followed by the powers of 3, and then the first um, n choose k, and then the second n choose k, and Clearly, uh, all of the ones we're interested in uh, will have x to the ninth in them. And here they are. And obviously, like to answer the question completely, which is to find the coefficient, all we have to do is just drop all these x to the ninths. And um, therefore, uh, the coefficient of the x to the ninth term is right here. Yeah? All right, cool. And of course, like it's pointless for me or for you to spend time actually figuring out what that number is. So we'll just leave it like this um, at the end. Yeah, all right, cool. I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching. Take care. Well worth it. Well fucking worth it.